Okay, my exceptional friends, it is Roger Spur once again, Mud Fossil University, and I am re talking about Robert Kuhn, who is the host of Closer to Truth on Public Broadcasting Service. Now, I have mud fossils, and I've been trying to present them, which changes the dynamic of geology. And this is a goose that has been petrified in the mud fossil manner, and that's the pattern of the feathers on its head, and that is the goose, button, and uh, I believe it's a goose. This is the neck, and it is a process called nucleophilic substitution. Look it up. Bones did it. Everything that we considered were rocks were not rocks. They are bones and body parts and so forth. Not every one of them, but um, a substantial number. This is a lung that was DNA certified as human. I'll be showing you the report in a second. Now, I took the samples myself, sent them off, and I drilled inside of them. I didn't take a swab and just wipe the outside. And they, they came back dense. I will show you the DNA report. And I also had two other specimens tested, and they were giants. And I will show you that very quickly. Now, um, Hold on one second and you'll see this. And I will be presenting this early part every time just to, in front of my newest presentations, which will always start with closer to the truth, fossils. And then whatever it is that time. Because I get into the history of it. I've studied all of them. Every one of them back to, uh, wait a minute, I have a little list of all the ones I got here. Well, here, I, I know them anyway. Hesiod, Ovid, read Metamorphosis. Start right there, Metamorphosis by Ovid. He wrote about Hesiod, who was a sheep herder that talked to the daughters of Zeus, which were the muses. They gave him the history of mankind, Gaia, and so forth. And I'm telling you right now, I have things to support much of what was told on Mount Helicon. And I've done all the research, I've gone right through the history, the dates, the times, the, the flood, the recovery of civilization after that, the wars. So I would like to speak on this level, because this guy here, I'm very impressed with him. I always have been. So that's what I'm hoping for. It's the Burgrun. Institute and uh, Robert Kuhn. So you can always jump over this initial part from now on, but I'm always going to start with this. Okay, as I told you, I have a DNA report and I will put this online. Now, I extracted the samples here. I have all these things on my property. I extracted the samples. I sent them off to uh, Helix Biolabs and they did the um, on these three things a 36 inch tip I will show you gigantic finger a lung which is this lung right here and then the mud tip which is the, from this hand and I have a lot from this particular finger and hand these are giants this was the same size as us I have ones that are giant and I mean giant and I will show you blood coming out of bones it's, it's everywhere in, in I understand the process now, and I need to speak to somebody about it because nobody else understands it. Now, this is what's done with PCR, and I drilled into these. I didn't just scrub it off the surface. Now, the lung, I mean, the mud tip did not come out quite as strong as the uh, lung, which was dense with blood, and the gigantic fingertip, which I'll show you, which was dense with blood. That's these two. The lung didn't have quite as much. DNA, but the excellent quality DNA was obtained from the 36 inch tip and the lung. So this one had excellent, I mean this thing here is, you could almost transplant the damn thing. <laughs> That's like solid blood in here. I drilled up in there and took the sample out of it. And I did it in the most stringent conditions and it was excellent and he said it was dense. Now the reason it's flat like that I believe is these things were in the great flood that they talk about. And they died flat like this. And then in the water is the preservation process and I understand that too because it's called nucleophilic substitution. This is a giant fingertip. If you really look at it in a CAT scan, you can see where the the um, fingernail used to be. You know, the tip is eroded off. Yes, but the, the, the you know you have to look at things in the correct light and shadows and so forth. But in the CAT scan, it's all there, and the, you know the bone pad and then the 
tendons and then the pads on the bottom and, and this and that's where the apical tuft is and anyway the, and then blood comes right out of them very 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 easy to do these and you saw the goose it's my buddy and that's even anything that separates skin tissue organs this is now called interstitial I really discovered the reason behind all of these literally membranes they've always called it areolar tissue just sort of fluffy stuff in between no they're all membranes layers thousands of them that separate different things in your body they all have different chemistry that's a whole nother thing and that's about health and that's how health is and and we need to understand transition notes I know I'm going off off cue here, but I can't help myself. This is the area that we live in. This is our blood. This transfers stuff that has a whole ton of extra electrons into places where they need electrons and back and forth, dumps them, picks them up, and so forth. That's just another issue. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off that. <laughs> but anyway, I, this is going to be online. And here's what it ended up being. Homo sapien, mitochondrial, cytochrome B gene, homo sapien, D loop. I learned so much about the body's chemistry and about all of the membranes and all of the different tissue layers and, you know, the, the, the blood and the minerals and the metals that are in there, transition metals. Very, very interesting stuff. So this will be, a, there'll be a link to this. It's, you know, and again, I was the one that extracted it. All I did was send this stuff off that I pulled out of here. If I'm faking it or I, you know, forged something, well, good. I will let this be tested for DNA in the right conditions. I, I, I'm a little concerned because, what did I show you this other giant? Hold on. All right, this is on my property as well. It's right out in the back. And it was on the surface. I didn't go digging these things up. Look at this. This is a fingertip. That is the fingernail. All right, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. And I have the fingerprints, too. And I drilled up inside and got blood out of the artery. Now, that's the bone in the back of the bone that bumps up against the other bone. We figured out it was a left thumb, I believe, is what the determination was. And I work with anatomists and everything else. Now, and then the tendons come up the side, and they lock into the side, and, and your fingers can you know, twist and so forth because of these tendons. Now. This, obviously, if it's this good and there's a fingernail, obviously there's got to be fingerprints. Well, guess what? All right, I believe I showed you the fingernail and the, of the thumb. Well, actually, the left thumb, I believe it was. This is the fingerprints. You see that? This was called grip skin. It's about that thick. And it's, it's a very dense, heavy layer of skin, and it contains the fingerprints. And these are the sweat pores. You see this? Sweat glands, sweat pores, and I found all of this stuff in, in in all kinds of places. But that's pretty good size. My finger fits about in one fingerprint ridge. All right, these are the ridges, and they have all the little dots in them, and that's it right there. All right, so that's a giant. Now that thing there, I believe, is going to be over 150, 180 feet tall, somewhere around there, because if the fingertip. The tip is three feet long, so do some, and they seem to be anatomically very, very, very accurate to to us. And, and let me show you something else, because this was all documented, and we sort of laughed at it like it was all sort of silly. And if you now think this is silly, I think you should reconsider. Now, I, I have a bunch of stuff from the one, this fingertip one here, and it's in a, a lot of different areas of decay, but this is the actual hand that this fingertip came from, and it's three feet wide, the hand. Now, that's the bumper pad. This is a left hand. This ridge, if you take your own hand and put it out in front of you, you're going to see the same thing. You've got this fluffy reddish looking stuff here that's very areolar, you know, it's a bumper. And you see it? It runs like here. Now, it's eroded, and what you have left is the grip skin. Remember we show, I showed you the thing of the grip skin? On your pads, and on here too, you have grip skin. It's different, and it's extremely dense, I believe, in silica. And one other thing that is going to come to be talked about later is iridium. I believe your, well, I know for a fact that your whatever it is, 
you touch on your body you have to be able to separate yourself from the rest of the world and this is the stuff that has the ability to ward off the rest of the world invading you through your skin you know if it's in good condition and that also requires some other things because I get into the health aspects now once I understood what your body's made of and how this chemistry works I'm deep 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 into the chemistry so we got a lot to talk about Okay, I told you I had CAT scans done, and I want to point out Jesse Garant and Associates. They did them for me, no charge, in the interest of science, and, you know, I, I can not thank them enough. Jesse Garant and Associates, they are, the, I think they're one of the best in the world, and they do the um, CAT scans for all kinds of big companies. Uh, and, and they were just as nice as nice could be. Now, I want to show you something. This is that fingertip. And they did the CAT scans on seven different things for me. And, and uh, Fabio, thank you, my friend, for talking to me. There are nicer people you're never going to meet. Now, you see that little hole there? I hope you can see that, yeah. That, that little black spot, I believe, is the vein. And I believe this is the artery. And these two are the tendons that come up to make the finger do what it does. Now, I believe this is a right hand thumb and the reason I say that is you see this bone is off to the side it's not in the middle. On your own hand, put your, you're going to feel your bone sticks off to the you, it, the bone coming up below bumps into this so that, that's how they work. Now, most of your fingers in the middle, they're sort of in the middle. Well, your thumbs are different. Your thumbs and your big toes, and they, for some reason, they are the most dense and flush with blood and preserve the best. The thumbs and toes, the big toes, are, are, are the things that I find most. Although everything else preserves, too. But you see the dark, that's one type of blood, and you see this is the other type of blood. And in the CAT scan, it shows up very nicely. Now, I took this fingertip here and I broke off this side and that's where the bone is see that's where the bone is right there that's the bone I broke this off just to see what's going on <laughs> and you can here's the problem nucleophilic invasion you say there's nothing there that's just basalt that's just this that's just that no it's not that came from this finger so we know it was this in, in it when it started all right and up in here we see nothing we see absolutely nothing but I know, I understand the chemistry. There is a difference. And also, there's a difference where things invest. You see that color? That is where the tendons wrap into, well, there's some kind of an investment nature to that chemistry. You see it? This is what's called an apical tuft up here. I've got one around here somewhere. Here it is right here. You see that? That's where this apical tuft, this is from the other hand or whatever, one of the fingers eroded way down to nothing, and, and this little bit falls off the tip of the distal phalanges and just falls off. But all of these little balls have tendons locking into them, and that is what allows your fingers to be so tough and grip and pull against stuff. I mean, they're tough, tough, tough. This is a nice, nice setup. And you see the way these things come in here that's where these lock in snap in there and you got one side is your um let me see if i can figure it out i can't it's been a long time uh, i believe this is the vein side i'd have to look and see one of them is going to be red blood and one of them is going to be the vein blood it's hard to see on this one some of them is very very apparent um anyway i think i've made my case well let me just go a little further here with the cat scan hold on it's a structural guy that all does right. autopsies and very, very, very good at this stuff. Yeah. That was, I was just talking about Gil Hadley, who was, he looked at these, and, and he said that 100% they are the same anatomy as a human. Now, why don't we see the bone in here? Nucleophilic substitution. We see the blood vessels. Those are the things, that were, blood was the most tenuous of anything. Now, let me just come up here, because you can't see anything. They went up, to, like, see, they scanned up through them, you don't see anything. Normally, you're going to see bones in a regular person, but not in here. Now, see, here, here's that apical tuft at the end of a distal phalanges. That's the apical tuft. And here's the hand again, and I'm showing the hand and so forth. This, was when, this is like six years ago. 
six, seven years ago. Here's some more gigantic fingertips and bones and things. That have, you know, everything's, and there's, this is the knuckle that came off of that big hand. That's the bone ball of the knuckle. One side was completely eroded, and the other side still had the muscle on it. That side was eroded. This side still has the muscle on it. Uh, I don't know if I should, yeah, it's right there, the muscle. That was a long time ago. There's a bone ball. Let's see if I turn it over. Come on, Roger. All right, that's, a, see, calcium changes different than the bone marrow. The bone marrow has a different substitution because, okay, whoops. <laughs> There we go. That's that. That's the. Oop, there it is, right there. That's the muscle that wraps around the other side of the bone ball. And up top is the tendon that comes up. Anyway, I, I th I'd like to talk to somebody. I have so much information on this, and also I go back to the ancient texts. I understand, like I said, all the way up from Ovid and Hesiod and um, Plato and Solon and you know, Herodotus, the whole nine yards, I've read them all. And I know what their take was and what they said about our ancient history. And I try to make them head to head and I see what fits and hits and hits. And if I do it like this and they're all over the place, well, I'm not going to go with it. But if I see one says this and then another guy says the same thing, another guy says, well, they may have different names for things. But if it fits in the right time frame and it fits the right set of circumstances, I'm going to consider it. And I have found things that nobody has considered. And until you consider the things that I've found, what you're, you're just walking around in circles. Because you say, oh, that's impossible, that's impossible. Well, I showed it's not impossible, it's fact. So I am going to continue to present closer to the truth facts and just title them something new because I also have to work with physics and light and a new atomic theory called electron flood theory. It shows we can actually easily accelerate light. I can produce muons and electron neutrinos. I can show all this. Okay, this is a lung that I had DNA certified, but that's the pattern of the pleura on the lung. That's the tab on the bottom which I drilled up and got the blood out of. This lung here had deteriorated where the pleura, which is basically the coating of the lung, brought it back down to the, right down into the alveoli, which you can actually see the pattern of the alveoli in here. And this bled blood out of every one of those little red spots. I mean literally blood, this blood right here, all right, I'm serious. Now, let me show you something else. Okay, if you understand anatomy, there is what's called bone foramens, and they have where your, your blood vessels and your um, nerves and so forth go in between bones, like that bone attached to another bone, that's got to rock and do all kinds of things. So there's a cavity in there with a little attachment of blood vessels and nerve endings that go to the next bone. When you die, it breaks open and you get blood coming out of there from the blood mud fossils. Because these are preserved and really like encapsulated in a, in, a, in a encasement of mud. And if the pH is right and everything, the blood that's way inside the bone, it just says, hey, hey the guys just stay here and wait. Sooner or later, it'll come back to life. <laughs> and uh, when you take it out of the ground, just like that lung bled everywhere, they, these bleed. They come right out. And then also, I took it and there's no question it's blood because behind it is the scab, the fabri fibrin. You see that? This is a scab that makes the clotting and the blood, the blood cells get caught in there. And the way the blood came was from these two holes that are underneath in the foramen. You got your vein, which is this black area down in here. And you got your artery, which creates the red blood. That is just the nature of mud fossils. And now I'd like to get closer to the truth. So let's get closer. That's accelerated light. The black balls are bosons, which are also muons, which are also dark matter. The white is exploded light particles, which we normally call electrons, but they were, we never knew. The electron white ball was attached to the black ball until now, because now we fully understand it. 
this is the photon, this is the dark matter muon, this is the electron which turns into electron showers. This right there is what we always thought was an electron, but we never knew the black part existed. We just thought it was a white explosive electron that caused electricity, static, lightning, all that business. But no, it had its dark component. And there is additional dark components everywhere just waiting to attach. And this is exactly what they're looking for from CERN. Muon neutrinos, the black ball, electron neutrinos, the white ball, when they concuss, which is called Cheryankov, they black ball doesn't do anything because it's only gravity. It does not emit, it does not absorb. This turns into electron showers, identical what CERN's looking for. And we've got done it six years ago. I had videos on this as well. This is when I realized that closer to truth didn't mean anything until somebody looked. So that's what I'm hoping for. That's what PBS says. That's what my friend here, um, Professor Kuhn, or Dr. Kuhn said, I, and I certainly like to engage. That's all I'm asking for. And I, I'll stay afar. I don't need any exposure or any... I don't really want to get in the middle of a lot of this. I'd like to just show it and then comment on it. That's, that's really what my goal is. And then to have it available for kids to understand this. Because right now they're being taught things that they have to repeat in order to get a good grade. And that what they're repeating is just what their professor was told to tell them. Regardless if it's true or not. That's the way I'm seeing things. And I don't mean to go down that road every time. But that's the road I've been on for 10 years. And I, I, until I get somebody that will engage with the evidence, then it's just nonsense. All right, I love you. Goodbye.